Honestly, this whole thing should really be freaking you all out. When you sit and think about everything that's going on, when you really sit and think about it, not only are costs on the rise and inflation is uncontrollably out of hand, but now the dollar is on the verge of total destruction and collapse at the hand of BRICS and their push for a universally accepted CBDC backed by gold. Okay. Now, I am seriously considering upping the ante and converting my resources to a much heavier split leaning in the favor of a decentralized cryptocurrency, BTC, Bitcoin, ETH, XRP, Ripple, who knows. Okay, but real quick, let's cover a few breaking news updates and urgent warnings. Three hospitalized amid outbreak of salmonella infections tied to flour. Let's take a look. So three people have been hospitalized amid a multi-state outbreak of salmonella infections tied to flour, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. A dozen people from 11 states have already been infected with the inf Infantis outbreak strain of salmonella as of March 30, according to data from the CDC. However, health officials cautioned that the true number of illnesses is likely much higher than what's been reported. And the CDC said most people who fell ill reported eating raw dough or batter made with flour. The only common ingredient in the raw dough and batter was flour, according to the CDC. Meanwhile, the CDC is in collaboration with the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and public health and regulatory officials in several states are still working to determine the specific brand of flour linked to the illnesses. Flour doesn't look like a raw food, according to the CDC, but most flour is raw. This means that it hasn't been treated to kill germs that cause food poisoning. Meanwhile, any raw flour used to make dough or batter can be contaminated with germs like salmonella. However, such germs are killed when the flour is cooked or baked, according to what health officials said. Meanwhile, healthy individuals that become infected with salmonella can have symptoms including diarrhea, fever, and stomach cramps, although these symptoms usually last from six hours to six days after consuming the bacteria. Recovery usually takes between four and seven days, according to the CDC. Most importantly, however, children under the age of five years old and adults over the age of 65 years old and people with weakened immune systems may experience more severe illnesses that require medical treatment or hospitalization. So that's a thing. And let me guess. Odds are bug flower. Bug flower will never have this issue and will be completely safe. And that's why we should be making the big switch to bug flower now safe for human consumption, even though, although raw and a flower recall potentially on top of an extremely low wheat harvest and prices only going up higher and higher as the dollar continues to buy less and less. I think I see what's happening here, don't you? And much like I mentioned earlier, investors are seen pouring trillions of dollars more into the government only money market funds in search of safety and for safety and better rates. Plus, U.S. banks are dangling promotions to lock in customer deposits after analysts are saying the banking crisis shook markets last month and lenders are attempting to manipulate account holders by rejigging offers in an effort to keep customers cash parked in their accounts for longer and to avoid the risk of a liquidity crisis and bank runs, all of which we've talked about on previous videos. These U.S. banks are trying to entice depositors during a recession, no less, by offering signing bonuses to open new accounts or deposit money on a regular basis. And what this ultimately means is if you need to borrow money, if you need a large withdrawal, if you need a loan, you're probably going to have a hard time getting it. Now, obviously, green lighted by the failures of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB and Signature Bank last month, which spooked customers and banks in the process, but gaslighted account holders, prompting them to move some one hundred and nineteen billion dollars of their deposits, money, capital resources out of these smaller institutions. 
And with Barclays predicting that going into next year, we will see more than $1.5 trillion leave the banks for safer money funds, the banks have decided to start offering promotions to keep that money in the banks. With banks like Capital One Financial Corporation advertising a $100 bonus for a $1,000 deposit and a $1,000 bonus for a $100,000 deposit for over 90 days. Doesn't quite get me excited just yet, folks. Wells Fargo offers 3.51% for over $100,000 deposits with a six-month balance. All this is taking place as the IMF warns that the next five years will have the slowest growth since 1990, which will be a severe blow to the global economy. And I would be willing to bet that a lot of people can attest to this, particularly those who create YouTube content and are starting to see the slowdown. And I've even heard from someone just yesterday that Wells Fargo called them to offer them 3.51% for over a 100K deposit with a minimum six months balance. And look, folks, I'm not interested in the banks. I don't trust the banks. And I am not at all excited about 3.51% for six months with 100 grand tied up in the bank. But I mean, come on, really? Wells Fargo? Seriously, guys. And 3.51% of that? You got to be kidding me. But no matter what happens with the SEC, Ripple has already won. And just the simple fact that Ripple has been fighting the SEC for years is a major green flag for crypto these days. Because Ripple Labs XRP has long served as a punching bag for the jaded crypto folks until Gary Gensler. Now, Gensler is the Cruella DeVille to crypto's 101 market caps according to blockworks and the sec has come for kraken genesis and gemini although it was very late to the latter two gensler has prosecuted lbry and sued degenerate in chief justin sun over his trx and BitTorrent offerings just last month now he's even angling for the biggest fish coinbase posturing to sue the top u.s crypto exchange for trading in alleged unregistered securities so Folks, as I've said it before, I'll say it again, secure your keys. Do not get tied up in the exchanges. Cold storage is going to be vital. And the rapid pace of de-dollarization is going to wipe out so many, according to Kitco. The train is moving fast at full speed, and gold is the first to react. The U.S. dollar's dominance is being challenged on several fronts simultaneously, from countries choosing to conduct trade in local currencies to BRICS developing its own currency, and gold is paying attention. China and Russia in particular stepped up their efforts to ditch the U.S. dollar. Russia has been moving away from the greenbacks for some time now, but efforts accelerated after Western sanctions were introduced following the invasion of Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin said he supports using the Chinese yuan for trade settlements between Russia, Asia, Africa, and Latin America, and the yuan is already the most traded currency in Russia, according to the data compiled by Bloomberg. This happened only in February after the yuan surpassed the dollar in monthly trading volume for the first time. This was topped by Russia's State Duma Deputy Chairman Alexander Babakov confirming that BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are working on creating their own common currency, common digital currency. Babakov suggested that the new currency could be backed by a basket of commodities, including gold and other rare earth elements. Now, last week, former Goldman Sachs chief economist Jim O'Neill called on the BRICS bloc to, to expand and challenge the dominance of the U.S. dollar. O'Neill argued that the dollar's dominance destabilizes other nations' monetary policies, which is why BRICS should counter it. The U.S. dollar plays a far too dominant role in global finance, he wrote. And this also in a paper published in the Global Policy Journal stated, whenever the Federal Reserve Board has embarked on periods of monetary tightening or the opposite loosening, the consequences on the value of the dollar and the knock on effects have been dramatic. Now, former President Donald Trump commented on the global de-dollarization trend when speaking to his supporters on Tuesday, and the U.S. dollar is crashing, is what he said, and will no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat frankly, in 200 years. Trump said after pleading not guilty in a Manhattan court to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records uh, before a judge who has supported the Biden campaign. Now, in recent developments, Saudi Arabia has approved joining a China-led Shanghai corporation 
or cooperation organization, SCO, as a dialogue partner. The SEO is a pol political security and trade alliance created in 2001 to counter Western influence. Its members include China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and four Central Asian countries. Another historic move by China was the completion of the first yuan settled LNG trade or liquid natural gas, which was done between the Chinese National Oil Company and France's Total Energies through the Shanghai Petroleum and Natural Gas Exchange. In response to higher demand for the yuan, Chicago's CME Group opened options trading for Chinese yuan futures this week, and many traders no longer view CNH as an emerging market currency like it was 10 years ago, according to Chris Pavi, CME Group's executive director of FX Products. This week, China and Malaysia announced that they were open to discussing the creation of an Asian monetary fund to reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar, and Malaysia's central bank is also working on a trade settlement mechanism in local currencies. India and Malaysia announced over the weekend that they abandoned trading in U.S. dollars and can now settle in Indian rupees. India also said it would offer up its currency as an alternative to U.S. dollars for countries struggling with USD or U.S. dollar shortages. Meanwhile, gold is paying attention. And this de-dollarization trend can directly impact the gold market, especially regarding sentiment, said Gainesville Coins precious metals expert Everett Millman. Side note, I even received an email from Hard Assets Alliance, and it stated just how many people have signed up and are now funding their accounts and buying more gold here recently. The proof is in the pudding, folks. There is definitely a lot of discourse about the dollar losing its reserve currency status, where the conversation is going to be very important for gold and for those who own and invest and hold it. And the idea that the dollar is going to imminently collapse, according to Milman and what he told Kitco News, is very, very definitely a possibility, although potentially overhyped. But it affects people's perception and sentiment in the gold market. And when you look at shorts versus longs in old futures, sentiment is still fairly neutral. But folks, I will tell you guys right now, again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And if there is a swing in the public perception on what's happening with the dollar and the U.S. economy, that will shift sentiment very quickly. And gold is usually the first asset to react to that. Wednesday, the gold market continued to trade solidly above $2,000 an ounce, with June COMEX gold futures last at $2,039.20 flat on the day. After buying a record amount of gold in 2022, central banks are not letting up with 2023 seeing the strongest start to the year in more than a decade, according to the World Gold Council, the WGC. Global gold reserves increased by 52 tons in February, rising for the 11th month in a row, according to the MGC on what they said Tuesday. And in January, central banks bought 74 tons of gold. Year to date, central bank's net purchases stand at 125 tons. This is the strongest start to a year back to at least 2010 when central banks became net buyers on an annual basis. The biggest purchaser in February was People's Bank of China with 25 tons bought. This was the fourth month increase for China during which the PBOC added 102 tons of gold.